Okay, so thanks, um, thanks for staying here for the last block. My name is Stefan Stamm. Uh, I'm the uh, at the University of Kentucky. I'm also the founder of Circuit, and I'm going to tell you how we're using SI RNA against uh, tau circular RNAs to treat Alzheimer's disease. Uh, Circuit, our company, was founded uh, last year. It came out of a part of the University of Kentucky uh, business incubator. And uh, we obtained SETR funding, and uh, based on this, an options agreement from the University of Kentucky. We also will get uh, state funding from Ken, uh, from Kentucky. And basically, the lab is going to commercialize uh, results from my lab. So here's the problem. Uh, this on this side is my girlfriend, the love of my life. Uh, her name is Augusta Data. She was Alois Alzheimer's first patient, and like her, about 10% of people older than 65 will develop Alzheimer's disease, which essentially will break uh, the bank. It costs right now about 350 billion, uh, 20 billion for treatments. Uh, the hallmark of this disease are neurofibrillar tangles here that are essentially protein deposits of neurofibrillar uh, protein tau. Uh, nobody really knows why they are formed, why these tangles forms in humans, but they also form based on some uh, hereditary diseases and based uh, after, uh, after traumatic brain injury. There's no animals for these NFT formations. Uh, what is on the market right now, FDA approved, is um, antibodies that target the second part of Alzheimer's that's probably not causative. These are plaques of beta amyloid here, and these are uh, antibodies that help dissolving these plaques. So bottom line is that there's no therapies against tau accumulations currently available. We came into this uh, game by uh, uh, discovering here uh, tau specific circular RNAs. So, what are circular RNAs? An RNA in humans is caused by pre messenger RNA processing where it connects exon one to two to three and so on and so forth. However, there can back splicing, occur, back splicing can occur. For example, here exon 12 is connected to 10 or to 7 instead of being connected to 13 what you get is a circular RNA. And what we found in the lab is that these circular RNAs, tau circular RNAs, but also other circular RNAs, can be translated into proteins after they go on epigenetic base modifications. Once you have this translation, you have form these protein products that uh, make a long story short, that promote formation of uh, neurofibrillar tangles in vitro and in cell models. So the model for Alzheimer that we have is we have these circular RNAs, they undergo RNA editing after an insult. Uh, you get translation of the circular RNAs, and then you get uh, NFT formation that leads to the loss of neurons. And this starts in a certain brain area and then spreads throughout the brain. Therapy based on this model is straightforward. You make as iron against these circular RNAs. So we tested, uh, so the as RNAs are against the unique site, against this backsplice function where 12 is connected to 7. That happens only in, in these circular RNAs. Uh, we tested all 22 SI RNAs. We found two winners that are act now in the low picomolar range, and we're undergoing now standard chemical optimization to get this uh, the, the range down to make more more uh, increase efficacy. And we're also optimizing them from for nasal uh, delivery. So bottom line is here: it's possible, and this is not self-evident, to remove circular RNAs using SI RNA technology, and we're doing all the tricks to make this better. Um, the second thing that the company is developing is developing a human uh, graft system to model Alzheimer's disease. These circular RNAs depend on genetic elements that are primate or human-specific ALU elements, and mice don't have the ability uh, to interact with these uh, kind of um, uh, genetic elements. So what we're doing to solve these problems, we generated human embryonic stem cells that express our circular RNAs under an usable promoter. We induce them into, uh, we pre-differentiate them into uh, neuronal precursors and they get grafted into uh, mice. And what we get is basically a humanized mouse models where we have a uh, human brain or human organoid uh, in the mouse brain. These uh, animals then will be observed for NFT formation plus and minus our circ RNAs. We also generate normal standard transgenic mice using mouse genetic elements to get uh, circular RNAs. The third part of the company, I'm very excited about this, is using protein products of circular RNAs as Alzheimer markers and also therapeutic uh, targets. To make a long story short, others and we 
uh, identified circular RNAs that are upregulated in Alzheimer's disease. So they are in disease progression, they're upregulated. And if you take them together, they can predict Alzheimer's disease as a molecular marker uh, with an accuracy of like 30%. This is much higher than what you have right now. What we found, and this is patented and also will be published, that editing of these, um, uh, of these RNAs uh, will cause a translation into proteins and the editing goes up here shown here as Alzheimer progresses. Because these are circular RNAs, they have a peculiar uh, property. Uh, you start here with an AUG, you translate the circular RNA in a rolling circle. And then when you hit a frame shift, you get a new circular protein that is Alzheimer specific. And we're raising antibodies now, uh, taking uh, and, and testing these things for therapeutic targets and also for diagnostic uh, possibilities. In terms of intellectual property, so we have one uh, patent um, that is filed and then a provisional application. This is also not in prep, but it's filed now. Uh, in terms of competition, there's antibodies against beta amyloid, but there's no competition for tau. And then, uh, thank goodness, this paper is uh, finally accepted. Um, the next steps is we will optimize that humanized mouse model, this graft system, where we basically have a green fluorescent human brain in a mouse. Uh, we optimize the nasal delivery of the SI RNAs, and we're testing these five circular RNAs, antisero specimens now in CSF brain tissues, and um, also following this up with mass spec. So, in summarize, we have, um, I think, pretty good uh, pr uh, pr uh, preclinical data that showed that tau circular RNAs are a, a target for Alzheimer's disease. They can be both diagnostic, but also uh, a target to basically fight. Uh, NFT formation, and um, we have IP, IP protection and um, other jingles and bells in place. And what I would like to get in further discussion is like, are there any other circular RNAs in pharma? Did anybody, I mean, stumbled across them? Because that the guys are translated is new. And this is, goes against what everything I have been teaching for the last 30 years in RNA biology. They should not be translated, but they are. Uh, any ideas about existing humanized mouse models and then uh, anybody interested in testing our mouse model? Thanks. We know you guys are tired, but there we go. Just a quick question. Um, uh, perhaps I missed this, but what's Tao's um, normal function? But yeah, it's stable, tau normal function, it stabilizes micro, uh, microtubules in the brain. So if you look at a neuron in the brain, this is literally miles of, uh, of cells that are wrapped around, so they then have, have special requirement. That's what the stuff is doing. It's specific for the brain. Uh, it's in all animals that have this brain, but the circular RNAs are only in humans and not even in monkeys. We, we look, we couldn't find them. And that's probably a special adaptation. Do you know why these circular RNAs get activated later in the life? Yeah. So my this is completely speculation. And so what we found by testing is that A to I, adenosine to inosine editing leads to their translation. My inkling is that there's a certain subset, a very small subset, where these circular RNAs are translated. And they're probably doing something in my brain that's good. Uh, and then something happens if you get hammered with a Emma, uh, A to I editing in the hippocampus goes way up, classic traumatic brain injury. And then we think this starts a translation as a uh, kind of pathophysiological event. Um, that's why we want to make these antibodies to follow this up. And the mechanistic thing is probably there's an inosine uh, binding factor that causes translational initiation that we're hunting down. All right, thank you again. All right.